Hi Pick and Mixers, I hope you're well, hope you've had a good week. We're very excited in our church this week because the government has said we can sing. We can sing hymns, but we've got to wear a mask while we're singing, which will be a bit strange, but we're very excited about it. We've got, I think, about five weeks left of doing this video, and then I'm hoping in September we'll actually be able to meet together in church. So I thought I'd make these last five stories be about Jesus, if that's okay. Different sort of stories, not in any particular order. And our story today is about some friends. I'm hoping they're on the train. Around the water feature. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, and stop. Lovely. So, um, have you got any friends? That's the Makaton sign for friends, which I think is nice. Um, friends are people who actually want to spend time with us. They might phone us, or text us, or write, might send us birthday cards. Um, they'll say hi <laughs> if they meet you in the street or in work. It's nice to have friends, isn't it? And in our story today, we've got four friends. One, two, three, four. And we've got paralysed man. He was paralysed. It means he couldn't sit up, he couldn't do anything. He was completely um, dependent on his four friends. So it's a good thing that he had four friends. I expect you've got three or four or five or even more friends. And in our story today, uh, we come across a house. Now, I, I don't know what kind of house you live in. When I used to teach in Dorin Park in Chester at special school, there was a little, well he was a big boy really, he used to come up to me even on the playground or in the corridor and say, Mrs Roberts, Mrs Roberts, what sort of house do you live in? Because he loved to hear me say the word bungalow. Oh he, he would be creased laughing, he'd be beside himself whenever I said I lived in a bungalow and he'd say, where do you sleep? And I'd say, downstairs, where are your stairs, his next question would be. I'd say, I haven't got any stairs, it's a bungalow. Well, he was beside himself. So, some, some of us live in bungalows, I know some of you do. And there's no uh, stairs. Now, in Bible times, people lived in houses that had like a flat roof. Well, I'll show you a picture of one just now. Um, I think there were mainly one story and there were stairs but the stairs were on the outside and they would use this area up here to store things. Couldn't do that where I live. Dear me, the weather, everything would be ruined. Um, but there we are. So a sort of a bungalow and uh, I'll tell you the story now. So everyone was beginning to talk about the new teacher, Jesus, who did and said wonderful things. When Jesus came to Capernaum, that was a, a village, there was a little house in which he was teaching and it was soon packed with people. So many people wanted to hear Jesus. They packed the house out. That would be against the rules now, wouldn't it? But there we are. Outside, Crowds pressed close to the open door, straining their ears and craning their necks to see. Along came four men. Each one of them was holding the corner of a sleeping mat, a sort of mattress, I suppose. And on the mattress was a poorly man. He was just lying there. He couldn't sit up. So each one had a corner, I expect it was quite heavy. So they were good friends, weren't they? As they came near the house, they tried to elbow their way through the crowd. You know, a bit of this and a bit of that. 
it didn't work, we couldn't get in, and no one was willing to stand back and let them through. <sighs> well, for a moment, they put down the mattress. Hmm, and they had to have a think. It's always good to think. They had to think, what could they do? How can they get into this house? They can't get through the door, can't get through the window. What are they going to do? Hmm. They were determined to get their friend to Jesus somehow. And then suddenly, one of them had an idea. And he climbed the outside steps. So the steps would be on the outside of the house. He started to climb up those steps. No one had thought of that. And he began with his hands to scrape away at the hard packed earth that filled the space between the wide roof beams. So up here there would be some beams, beams of wood, and these would be packed with earth. And he began to scratch away until he made a hole in the roof. And so a little hole appeared and he grunted with satisfaction. Hmm, it would be easy enough to patch up the mud roof afterwards. He signalled to his friends to give a hand and before long they had dug a gap big enough for their friend and his mat to squeeze through. Well next came the difficult job of carrying him up the steps. That would be tricky wouldn't it? When they were all ready they gently and skillfully lowered their friend through the gap in the roof bending over the hole as they guided the mat to the ground right at Jesus' feet. I don't know if you can see that picture. Can you see the friends on the roof looking down? Big hole. <laughs> and you can see Jesus and the friend on the mat. Well, there was a shout of laughter from some in the crowd at the man's unexpected arrival. But the religious leaders who were there frowned and scowled at such a rude interruption to their serious conversation. Jesus smiled. He was delighted that the four friends had such trust and faith in him that they would go to any lengths to find a way of bringing their sick friend to him for help. Isn't that wonderful? They, they just completely trusted in Jesus and it didn't matter what they had to do they were gonna get their friend to Jesus and I think it's really nice because they do some thinking they do some acting which, you know they act it out making that hole they climb up the steps and at the same time they're very gentle and careful about their friend it's a lovely lovely story of true friendship and the best friend of all is somebody who can take you to Jesus and show you something about Jesus um, in the Bible, for instance. So thank you so much for joining me. Um, I'll do some more stories about Jesus over the next few weeks. I wonder if we can pray now, hands together and eyes closed. Heavenly Father, we thank you for these friends who ruined somebody's roof in order to get a, their friend to Jesus. And they patched it up afterwards, I'm sure, Lord. But we love that story of complete faith and trust in you. And we pray, Lord, you'll help us to be good friends to one another and do all we can to share the good news of the gospel with our friends. Amen. So if you want to hear more about the story, because at the moment he's just lying down, isn't he, on a mat. Let's see what happens. That'll be next week. And then I'll have some more stories. Put the friends back on the train. And I hope you have a lovely week. We're just going to do the blessing. La, la. The Lord bless you. The Lord give you safe. The Lord give you his peace. So we meet again. Amen. Bye-bye, everyone. See you soon, I hope. Bye.